What to photograph in March 2025? Hello, photo pillars. Rafael the Bar here. In March, we have quite a few photo opportunities. We've got the full moon, a total lunar eclipse, a partial solar eclipse, the Milky Way and the Galactic Center, the zodiacal light visible in both the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere, Mercury at its greatest eastern elongation, one of the best moments of the year to view and photograph the planet, the equinox of March, which is the first spring day in the Northern Hemisphere and the first winter day in the Southern Hemisphere. The auroras and five conjunctions of the moon with the planets, with Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Mars and Saturn. And also the occultation of Mercury behind the moon. Pretty cool. Ah, and don't miss the only zone for opportunities and talking about sunrise, sunsets, going out, blue hours, star trails. And as always, at the end of the video, I'm going to share with you three of the best photos that you guys have submitted to the Photopills Awards and that we featured in February. So let your imagination fly, decide what you want to photograph, and use photo pills to plan the photo you want. So you can go and capture it. Okay, let's get started. Let's see some of the best photo opportunities that can be captured in March 2025. Let's go. The full moon is on March 14th, giving us another great opportunity to use the full moon to tell stories. So based on the moonset and moonrise direction, plan your shot. Like for instance, I've done in this plan. So if on March 14th, the full moon date at 7.23 p.m. I am at the red pin position, I'll be able to visualize the moon, the full moon next to the Favarage lighthouse at the same height as the lighthouse. Check on the top panel that the height of the moon is 28 meters, which is the height of the lighthouse. The moon size is 7.6 meters, which is also represented on the map by this blue area here. So I can visualize on the map how big the moon will be compared to my subject, which is pretty cool. And, and if I go to panel number three and I check the elevation of the sun, minus 7.30 Nine, this means that this shot occurs during the nautical twilight. So I'll have to shoot a double exposure, one for the moon and one for the lighthouse, because there is not enough light. And by the way, if you wish to learn how to plan your moon shots, watch this video. Depending where you are on Earth on the full moon date on March 14th, you'll be able to see, enjoy and photograph a total lunar eclipse. It's when the Umbra Earth's strongest shadow completely covers the moon's disk. And the moon gets this characteristic red color. Pretty cool. So where the total lunar eclipse is visible? Well, we have it on the Philippines map. Here you see that in Europe and part of Africa, the eclipse will be visible at moonset, which is great to align the full moon eclipsed with an interesting subject. In the Americas, the eclipse will be visible and also in uh, Oceania, part of Australia and New Zealand at moonrise. And on the panel you have the time of each phase of the eclipse occurs for the red pin position. At the moment I have the red pin in Menorca and as you see on top panel axis 10 the total lunar eclipse will begin but as the moon is setting the moon will be setting eclipse which is pretty cool. But if I go to the United States I place the red pin over here, for example, you see at the top panel that you can photograph all the faces of the eclipse and the top panel stands you the exact time each face of the eclipse occurs, so you can miss it. And on the map, you have the position of the eclipse. You see that when I change the time, the top panel shows you how the eclipse evolves over time. And on the map, you have this line that's moving, which is telling you where the moon eclipse is going to be at all time. And also, if you are at the red pin position, you can always use the AR view to visualize where the moon will be in the sky, where the eclipse will occur in the sky. Where are you? Where are you? Here you have it. You have the horizon here, you have the path of the moon and, and the position of the moon. So you have everything. You know where to go to shoot the eclipse, the time, each phase of the eclipse occurs and where the moon will be in the sky during the totality phase of the eclipse. And you wish to learn how to plan your lunar eclipse shots, watch this video. The new moon is on March 29th, and March is the kickoff of the so-called Milky Way season. It's when you can photograph the Milky Way and the Galactic Center. In the Northern Hemisphere, it's fantastic to photograph the Milky Way and the core when it's low in the sky, capturing a beautiful panorama above your subject, or a really low, nice diagonal with the core behind your subject, for example. 
here on the map you have the position of Milky Way describing this beautiful arch but you can always tap on the night AR to visualize the position of the Milky Way uh, in the aumented reality so you know the polaris is here the horizon and you have the arch the Milky Way arching above the horizon and this is the core of the Milky Way the galactic center as you see the arch describes and as you see through the aumented reality view the arch of the Milky Way is pretty low in the sky pretty close to the horizon pretty cool let's go to the southern hemisphere and see what we have. Let's go, for example, to Namibia. And as you see in the southern hemisphere, the conditions of the Milky Way are amazing because you get the galactic center pretty high in the sky, uh, which is uh, pretty cool. And also you can photograph the galactic center when the Milky Way is pretty vertical or completely vertical, but also when it's forming a nice diagonal in the sky. Again, if you tap on the night AR and you think that you are at the ramping position in Namibia in this case, you'll be able to visualize the position of the Milky Way in the sky and you see the core is awesome and super high in the sky I just love the Milky Way in the southern hemisphere fantastic and again you used to learn how to plan your Milky Way shots which is pretty easy why is this video? around new moon is a great time to photograph the zodiacal light the zodiacal light is the reflection produced by the scattering of sunlight due to the particles that are traveling in the entire solar system in the northern hemisphere it is visible in the west after the astronomical twilight ends you find it in the sunset direction the direction of the thick orange line that you see on the map on the contrary in the southern hemisphere you'll find it in the sunrise direction the thick yellow line you see on the map before the morning astronomical twilight begins you used to learn how to photograph the zodiacal light watch this video on March 29th during the new moon there will be a partial solar eclipse and as you see on the map the best places to enjoy the eclipse are Europe, the northern of Africa, the eastern side of uh, the United States and a part of Asia and on the top panel based on the European position you have the time each phase of the eclipse begins for example now I have the European in Menorca and I know that the partial solar eclipse will begin at 11.06 uh, a.m. and it will end at 12.31 and 28 seconds p.m. and again if I change the time you'll see that the top panel the eclipse changes so at all times you know how much the moon will go over the sun and on the map you have where the sun will be at all time when I change the time and again you can always tap the AR view to visualize where the sun will be when the moon goes over it over there at the horizon here so I know thanks to the monitor rally views which are amazing views where the eclipse will occur in the sky you can really miss it and if you still learn how to plan your solar eclipse shots like this video the March equinox is on March 20th the equinox is quite a magic date it is the moment the sun crosses the celestial equator from south to north it is the beginning of spring in the northern hemisphere and the beginning of fall in the southern hemisphere it is a great time to photograph the zodiacal light and the auroras the sun is in the period of solar maximum which means that we will be more likely to enjoy and photograph the aurora borealis the thing is that solar maximum occurs on average every 11 years so you're lucky enough to live in Norway, Sweden, uh, Iceland, Canada in March you have great chances to see and photograph the aurora borealis actually in March we'll be doing a few Philippines expeditions one to the Canadian Rockies and another to Iceland to chase the aurora oh, oh I forgot that we also do a third one both of the Icelands to chase the northern lights when can you photograph the aurora? actually you can photograph them from September till April and yes you can photograph the aurora and the Milky Way in a single shot like Gilio did in this image when should you photograph the aurora? you can photograph them when the sky is clear there are no clouds the aurora is dancing in the sky and in any moon phase but usually people tend to photograph the auroras around a new moon but I have to recommend you that you can just shoot the aurora when the, the sky is clear and the uh, aurora is after in the sky even during full moon actually having a bit of moon above the horizon will help you catch more detail in your foreground plan and pray on March 8th Mercury will be at its greatest eastern elongation which means that the planet will be further away from the sun giving us great conditions to view and photograph it from both hemispheres Mercury will shine in the early evening sky with a magnitude of minus 0.14 which means that it will be visible to the naked eye and after sunset you'll find it low in the sky next to the sunset direction which is the thick orange line that you see on the map if you want to plan a shot with the planet you can miss it 
In March, there will be five cool moon planning conjunctions. On March 1st, Mercury and Venus will be pretty close to a pretty thin moon. The moon phase will be 1.8%. Also, if you're lucky enough to live in Australia, in Papua New Guinea, Eastern Indonesia, or the Solomon Islands, you'll be able to enjoy the occultation of Mercury behind the moon. On March 6th, Jupiter will be in conjunction with the moon, and the moon phase will be 47%. On March 9th, the moon will be in conjunction with Mars, and the face of the moon will be 74%. And on March 28th, the moon will be in conjunction with Saturn, and the moon phase will be very, very thin, only 1.3%. On both hemispheres, you'll find the moon planet conjunctions where the moon is, where this thin blue line that's moving the map is, which is pointing you where the moon is gonna be at all time. Where you find the moon, you'll find also the planets. And now let's see some of the best photos that you've submitted to the Photo Pills Awards and that we featured in February. The first one is a fantastic photo of the Winter Milky Way and the Zodiacal Light in the Pyrenees, Spain, photo by Luis Merino. The second one is a photo of the Moon and Venus dancing with the sea and tower in Toronto, Canada, photo taken by Charles Pont. And the third one is a fun photo of the sunrise in the desert with a camel and its handler taken during the Flopils expedition to Dubai and Abu Dhabi. A photo by Peter Bergen. Amazing photos, guys. Thanks so much for sharing them. And now, if you wish to learn how to plan and photograph each one of the events I've shared in this video, I invite you to download and study well our super detailed photography guides. I'm gonna leave a link to the guides in the description of this video and the first comment below. Download them. And as always, if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next Wednesday in another video. And remember that you have the power to imagine, plan and shoot, Legendary photos. Bye.